Welcome to Find Hope in Christ, an online media outreach ministry of New Hope Baptist Church. We're glad you joined with us today, so let's enter our sanctuary for our Sunday morning worship service. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like for you to please stand. Please stand with us and turn to 177. 177. There's something about that name. And we're going to go through it twice. We're going to sing it two times. something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain.
Good morning and welcome to New Hope Baptist Church this morning. If you're visiting with us today, we're glad you're here. If you're watching us on uh, social media, we're glad to have you as a part of our service this morning. I'm going to open us up this morning in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, once again, Lord, we humbly bow before you. Lord, we just thank you for this beautiful day that you've made for us. We thank you that you've given us the breath of life in our lungs, Lord, and we're able to be in your house again today. And Father, we continue to pray for all those that's on our hearts and minds, the many who couldn't be here today uh, for various reasons. Lord, we continue to pray for those that are battling illness and disease. Lord, we pray for those that's lost loved ones this past week. Just be with them in a mighty way and touch and give comfort, Lord. And Father, we pray for our services here today at New Hope. We pray for our pastor this morning. Just uh, fill him with the Holy Spirit. Give him the message that we are in need of today. For Father, we just ask that you uh, <clears throat> clear all the things of the world from our minds, Lord, uh, that we might let your word soak in. Lord, we ask that you go with us now through the remainder of this day. Lead God and direct us. Forgive us of our sins. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we'll hear from the choir. 46. In this world of troubles, everything and lacking not to stay. Starting my salvation in the good old fashioned way. I'm walking in the old time way, and I want the world to know. Amen. 
care whatever else you might be walking through, what you might be experiencing, that right there, amen, for every child of God says it all, amen, because regardless of everything else, amen, that truth never changes. Amen. I'm in the Lord that way, amen. I'm headed home one day to be with the Lord, amen, and going to be in His glory and behold His glory. Now, I'm telling you that good singing right there. See that last verse again, amen. At this time, we're going to have a, just a few announcements on the center portion of your bulletin. Uh, a reminder, the t-shirt embroidery orders are due by next Sunday, the 21st. If you'd like to have one of those, if you're a youth, uh, the youth will be paying for those. Um, the order forms are back there on the table in the vestibule. Uh, also, we need the names of anyone wanting to participate in this year's child dedication service, and that occurs on Mother's Day in May. We also need the names of any high school or college graduates. Uh, please give those to Corey Seal. April 25th is our next choir practice at 7.30. On April the 27th, from two until four, we're having our second annual spring carnival. The youth is sponsoring that. There's a sign-up sheet in the vegetable for that if you'd like to help out with that. On April the 21st will be our monthly fellowship breakfast starting at 8.30 in the fellowship hall followed by Bible study and our missions discussion. On Sunday, May the 5th, we're having a pinto bean fellowship lunch immediately following our services. Is there anything else this morning that needs to be announced? Okay, we'll discuss that, and I'm sure we'll follow through with that, Don, with our backpack ministry. Anything else this morning? I have an announcement this morning. I'm going to put this flyer on the table in the back. It is a men's outdoor weekend sponsored by the Baptist on Mission, the North Carolina Baptist uh, Men's. Um, it is, occurs on Friday night, May the 3rd, and Saturday, May the 4th. It is at Camp Caraway in Ashboro. Uh, it's, a, it's for men only. 
Uh, you have, if you if you, youth would like to go, you have to be at least 13 years old to attend, and you must have a, a parent with you. Uh, sounds like a lot of fun. It is featuring Royce Rayleigh, founder of Go Fish Ministries, and he has evidently a, a fishing show on TV. Uh, a lot of activities they're going to do, a lot of demonstrations. Uh, sounds like a lot of fun. It's May the 3rd and 4th. You have to call. It's $95 per person. You have to call before you go and get arrangements and re reserve your spot. Sounds like a lot of fun. I'm going to post this on the bulletin board in the back if you're interested. Anything else this morning? Our musical ministry this morning is Abigail Johnson, and then we're going to turn the service over to our pastor. Need a spirit filled preachers to teach us right from wrong. We need our old fashioned seekers who will pray all night long. Need some good gospel singing. To help us go another mile. Then his church will try to Lord and go home in a little while. It'll be worth it after all, child. It'll be worth it.
Praise God. Amen. You doing another? No. I ain't want to interrupt another one. Amen. Good to be in the house. Amen. God is so good. God is so present. I, I just thank him for all his many, many blessings and um, cannot just praise him enough. And I thank God for it. I'm telling you, I've just been such a, a, a blessed pastor. Uh, I've just been rejoicing in the Lord. Uh, seems like more than is fair here lately. Amen. You ever feel guilty about rejoicing? I mean, you know, you just you just rejoice and thank God for all of his goodness and his showers of blessings, you know, and, and sometimes you feel kind of guilty in doing so, you know, because God has been so good to you and smiled upon you and opened up heaven for you. Well, I'm not going to apologize for that. Amen. I'll give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. I'm putting my whole life into what she just sung. Amen. I'm telling you, it'll be worth it after a while. Amen. And I'm putting everything I am, everything I believe into that one truth. Amen. Because the Bible says that my eye hasn't seen, my ear hasn't heard, neither has it even yet entered into the heart. And I got a whole lot going on in there. Amen. But it fails in comparison to all that God has in store in glory one day. In other words, we can't begin to see, we can't begin to hear, we can't even begin to imagine. Think about that. And I've got pretty good imagination, amen. I know what the book says, but we can't even begin to imagine what heaven is going to be like, amen. And glory to God, I'm in that glory land way, and I'm just looking forward to all God has in store. That's good enough for me. He made it. He created it. He spoke it into existence, and he has a place prepared for me. Give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Whew. We're about to get carried away. I told Garrett this morning, I texted him, hey, Captain Garrett's flying the ship today, our boat, our plane today, and appreciate him. Uh, Brother Eddie couldn't be able to be here. And so I said, listen, I'm not, I'm caught not between one, not between two, but three sermons this morning. And in my silly lack of faith, when I started preaching, it was one of my greatest fears that I'd run out of things to say. Amen. Now I can't find time to say it all. But I thank God for that. Amen. I thank God for that. I want to say we, we attended the youth event, the multi-church youth event last night. What a great success that was. I appreciate Ashley and Corey and those that showed up and volunteered and helped serve last night was a great event. I didn't get a full count. I don't know. I've heard different numbers, but 60 plus uh, from ages 13 and up were, were in the gym and, and on, the, on the grounds yesterday and uh, last night. And any time you've got an opportunity to spend time with 60 plus 13 year olds and up, I'll take it. Give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. It was a great time of fun and fellowship. We finished the night with about a 30-minute devotion, looking into God's Word and sharing God's Word with them. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. And everybody put in a lot of effort and a lot of prayer. And it ended up, you know, with a lot of the kids saying, when are we going to do it again? Amen. I like that. I like that. And so we'll be looking forward to being able to do it again with them and share all the time and all the moments that we, that we can with them. Appreciate all the churches that were a great part of that. You know, I want to share this church. And if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me. Uh, I just want to share a verse that God has just been using and, and put it in my heart. And I want to share it with you this morning. And I don't know everything God's got in store, and I don't need to know. Uh, he knows, and that's good enough for us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I did say all I want to be is obedient today to what God would have us to do. And uh, I I'm sticking with this. Uh, this is something that God has put within my heart. But uh, it's one verse of Scripture. But it's a very, very, very powerful verse of Scripture. 
that has to be put into motion. You know, it's wonderful to read the Word. It's wonderful. To, I, I hold your Bibles up. How many of y'all have your Bibles? Let me see Bibles in the air. That's good. You know, I, I, I thought about this last night, and I thought, well, you know, I might have to ask for how many have the Bible on your cell phone. We'll hold those up. Amen. And, and I do. I do. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. As long as the Word of God, where you read it from, maybe you read it from. Amen. And so I thought, I might have to have folks hold that up. But that's good. Hold them up again. I like that. Amen. Folks still bring their Bibles to church at New Hope. Amen. I like that. There you go. I like that. Amen. But so much of the Word speaks directly to the Christian, to those who are in personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Boy, that's good words just to say. Those who are in personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I have all sorts, Geneva, of personal relationships, and I'm thankful for everyone, amen, that God has blessed me with, that God has given me, but none more valuable to me than my personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And to be able to carry that message and to be able to carry that truth and that relationship into the world in which I exist, on a day-to-day -day basis, for I'm not ashamed. I don't care who the Lord puts in front of me. I don't care who's in the presence. Amen. I'm not ashamed. I'm my Lord and Savior. I'm not ashamed to talk about my Lord and Savior. In fact, I, I love carrying on. I love kidding. You know, some of my family, you know, we carry on about sports all the time, you know, and it's all fun and good. But I want to talk about Jesus. Amen. More than anything else, I want to talk about Jesus and be able to share people with people my Jesus. This verse of Scripture, I want you to listen in Philippians chapter 2, and then we'll try to give it a little thought, and a, a little meditation, and what the Lord leads for, leads for us to do today. But in Philippians chapter 2 and, and, and verse 5, very short verse of Scripture, the Bible says, let this mind be in you. The word you, again, refers to every child of God, everyone that names the name of Jesus. How many of you name the name of Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah. That word Y-O-U is talking to Y-O-U. It's referring to you. And it simply says for us to let this mind be in you. What mind? Well, the apostle says, which was also in Christ Jesus. The mind in which we are to operate, the mind in which we are to function by, the mind in which we are to think by, church, is the very same mind that was in Christ Jesus. May the Lord add a rich blessing to the reading of his word. I want you to think about for just a moment. I, I want you to forget about everything currently it, as much as possible. I want you to forget for a moment, at least for a brief moment. We're not going to be here long, good Lord willing, but I want you to free yourself, free your mind for just a moment of everything else that it's thinking. Clear. And I want us to focus for just a little while on the powerful truth in that tiny verse that Paul wrote to the church in Philippi and says, as you live, move, and breathe, operate and function in the same mind 
as Jesus Christ. That takes us to the life and ministry of Jesus himself. Of Jesus himself. I, I want to say something for all of us, and I mean all of us, preachers included. There's times when life puts in front of us those new valleys, those new bridges in which we cross. They can be somewhat stressful when you especially focus too hard on them. And I'm one of the worst at that. Amen. Sometimes I look on my calendar and I see things that are upcoming. I see events that are planned for me. I and sometimes when I think about some of those things and there are new bridges, there are new things, you know, we're pretty comfortable in the old things, amen. And I pray I never get too comfortable. I still get nervous when I preach. And I thought, well, you know, you've been doing this a long time. But I pray that I'm always nervous because nerves put me in dependency upon God. Amen. And the reason we get nervous is because we know us. Amen. We know us, and us makes us nervous. Amen. And so we put our confidence in the Lord. But nonetheless, whenever we're thinking about those new things, those new grounds, those new areas of life that we've never walked before, those sometimes can become for us overwhelming, stressful. For all of us. Recently, the Lord put in my mind, reminded me of this verse of Scripture. You don't have to be overwhelmed. You don't have to be stressed. And I began to think and focus on the mind of my Lord and Savior, especially His earthly ministry. Nobody in all the history of humanity, was busier than him. Can you give him a hand? Can you give him some praise? Amen. When you think about his day-to-day, day-to-day life, he had to deal every day with the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, his critics, his haters. Amen because they were always present, especially as his ministry became even more public and, and the multitudes began to grow, they had to be present so that they could hear everything he said, so that they could witness everything that he did, amen? And so on a day-to-day -day basis, he had to deal with that. That was a pretty full plate within itself. But that wasn't all. Again, multitudes would come around. Multitudes would gather around the Lord Jesus day to day. Amen. As they woke, as they began to stir about after that first uh, cup of Folgers coffee, I don't know what they drank. Amen. I, you know, they began to gather around wherever Jesus was, and multitudes came. He had sermons to preach, parables in which to share, day after day, truth to reveal as he was truth to all of those multitudes that gathered day after day after day. If that wasn't busy enough, he had to deal with all of the sicknesses and diseases and the demon possessions that were be present in the multitude that would be with him. Remind, I remind you that John wrote and ended in his gospel 
that the books couldn't contain all that he did. There wouldn't be enough room to be able to write and to record all the miracles that he did. But miracle after miracle after miracle on a daily basis. I want you to think about this now. Now listen, I want you to get here. I, you know, put ourselves in that place. Listen. A blind man that had been born blind had never been able to have the gift to be able to see ever in life. And Jesus speaks, heals him, restores his sight. Amen. Gives him vision. He begins to leap around. He begins to rejoice and praise God. I can see. I can see. I can see. Amen. And in the presence of a multitude. And remember, the Bible calls a multitude 5,000 or more. Amen? And here is this delivered. Here is this man that has been healed and his sight has been restored and given back to him by the simple commands of Jesus himself. He begins to leap and jump around and praising and rejoicing God, rightfully so because of what Jesus has just done for him. I don't know about you, but I got to thinking, if I was in the multitude and I had a tummy ache, amen, I'd go to the same Jesus. Whatever infirmity I might have had, whatever affliction I may have had, I would have been finding my way to the same Jesus that I just saw heal this blind man that had been born blind and restored his sight. I'd be finding my way to that same Jesus. That's why John says there's no way to record everything that he did. Jerusalem <laughs> had never been healthier than they were in the day of Jesus because he healed them and delivered them from all manner, the Bible says, of sickness and diseases that had been brought before him. What an incredible truth. And he dealt with all of this day after day after day. In fact, the woman with the issue of blood, you might recall her, that had spent pretty much her life savings on just trying to have a better day, trying to be well. And she had spent basically everything that she had earned and stored up to be restored to good health on doctors and physicians. And she thought to herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. She said, there's power in him. Power enough to be able to heal me. And the Bible records that she had to fight her way through the multitudes that were just pressing, pressing Jesus. That's what he dealt with, church, on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, how do you think Jesus, and we know Jesus spent many nights praying all night. The Bible records that for us. I don't suppose that he did that every night. There were times that he rested and that the Bible records, like when he was on the ship um, in calm waters in the beginning. I don't know if you've ever been on a boat, but a boat in calm waters, amen, in calm skies, 
can be a comfortable place to catch a nap. I've caught a few myself. And he rested. Knowing all of this, and not only knowing all of this that he was going to face on a daily basis, he knew the end. Are you with me? He knew that in the end was the cross, the old rugged cross, where he would freely, willingly, Lay down his own life for his friends. This was always on the mind of Jesus. I began to think about that, and I began to think about, wonder how he started his mornings. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. I began to think about how did he, knowing everything that was in front of him, knowing the hectic, if you will, schedule, the busyness that he would have on a daily basis, waking up fresh, you know, when you wake up fresh, you know, you had a good night's sleep, you know, and you wake up and you just, ah, like that, you know. Well, I don't think Jesus started his mornings thinking, oh, it's another day. Where's my lunch pail? I got these Pharisees and Sadducees. Oh, I dread dealing with them. What a miserable day this is going to be. I don't think he began his day thinking, oh, all them poor sick people. They're going to be running and coming. And by the way, throw in the children. Never discourage children. I love that portion of Scripture where he bid them to come when the disciples said, oh, he's busy. <laughs> Get on fool you kids. But he said, no, let them come. And they gathered around at the feet of Jesus. How sweet and precious. But anyway, I don't suspect he started his day thinking, oh, I've got to deal with all this crowd, multi-sermons to preach parables to tell, oh, how am I going to get through it? No. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. Amen. Because I think Jesus faced every day as a day of, opportunity to be Savior and to be Lord, to be the Son of God, the Son of Man. Every day, looking forward to opportunity to help those in need, to minister to those who needed Him. I think He embraced every day and that opportunity that presented itself, which he knew of, before it ever came. What I want you to understand, church, is when the Holy Spirit, this is what happened for me recently, and God gave me this verse, amen, and the Holy Spirit began to, to wake it up inside of me, amen. You see, sometimes, listen, this book, the Bible says, is quick and powerful. It means that this book uh, has life, amen, sustaining life, life ability inside of it, amen. Uh, and listen, uh, when the Holy Spirit uh, begins to put the Word within the heart and wakes the Word up inside the heart, then you got something then you got something. Otherwise, you're just reading. Amen? 
Otherwise, you're just reading. I've heard too many stories. I've heard too many testimonies, and I've had too many personal experiences. Listen, I like starting out in the Word, amen, I, and I like just meditating upon the Word. And a lot of people, you know, I've heard, I've heard them testify. They read the Scriptures, and it's like they close the book, and it's like they get nothing. Out. And later on that day, <laughs> the Holy Spirit gives birth and like to the verse that you either read that morning or yesterday morning or sometime or another and calls it to remembrance. That's special. That's special. You see, it keeps us in focus as children of God. I'm thankful for this incredible truth and this incredible verse of Scripture. I wish that I could stand before you today and testify that every day I'm thinking, operate with the same mind as that of Christ. I can't testify that, but I can testify I'm getting better. I'm getting better. You know the old saying, practice makes perfect? Amen. The more things we put into practice, the better we get at it. Now you today have sat and listened to Perhaps one of the shortest sermons I've ever preached because I'm done. But you today have to decide is Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, a verse that I want to put into practice. Because you can dismiss it, get up out of your pew, go out those doors, and go away the same way you came in. Or you can say, you know what? The Holy Spirit blessed that verse to my heart, and I want to begin thinking with the mind of Christ. I'll tell you this, especially you young parents, your children will appreciate. Amen. They'll appreciate a mama and a daddy that thinks more like Christ than they do themselves. Because we're selfish. Like it or not, we're selfish. We're going to be more concerned about what's going on here and what's happening here. And Christ is not. Everybody around you, parent or not, will appreciate when you begin to operate and function the mind of Christ. Today be a good day to start. As we bow, and they come get an invitational song ready. As we prepare for invitation, I challenge us in the house of the Lord, I challenge us as children of God to at least begin praying, Lord, bless my mind to operate with the same mind in which you operated. Bless me to think more like you would think. Bless me to respond more like you would respond. Oh, and you begin to do that on a daily basis. You know what people are going to notice? Pretty soon they're going to notice a different you. They're going to notice a different you. But it's going to be a better you that they're going to embrace, and that they're going to appreciate. Maybe you're here today and say, Preacher, I'm going to make that commitment. I'm going to make that commitment today. I'm going home today, not tomorrow, today. I'm going to get up and do it again tomorrow, but today I'm going to start operating as much as the Holy Spirit will bless me to think with 
the mind of Christ. Maybe you're here and you say, Preacher, I just need to be saved. I need that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. No greater day, no greater opportunity than right now. Maybe you have other needs upon your heart. Altars open to whatever it might be. As we stand and sing. Hymn 320. Hymn 320. Oh, I like this song. Amen. Anybody in the house? Anybody in the house? Bless me, Lord. Bless me to begin to operate in the mind of Christ. Anybody in the house? Anybody in the house? I want to be that husband. I want to be that father. I want to be that wife. I want to be that mother. Amen. Anybody in the house? I want to operate and function in Christ's mind and not of my own. Anybody? Anybody? Not going to tarry. Not going to tarry. Anybody in the house? Anybody? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray with them. Amen. In the light of Anybody else in the house? Anybody else in the house? I just know from. I knew how to drink. I knew how to cuss. And that was one of the sermons I was going to preach today is how exhausting a sinful life is. You know, people fail to realize it's hard work to be a sinner. It is. It's exhausting. It like to wore me out. Amen. It did. Because it was continuous. It was nonstop. Amen. But for God to be able to bring all of us from that type of darkness, that type of blindness, through his marvelous grace, forgive us of all of our sins, give us a place in heaven, and allow us to think with his mind, his same mind. Oh, what a blessing. Amen. Good to be in the house, church. I love you. Continue to pray for one another. we got a lot of things coming up. Amen. I'm looking forward to our, our youth carnival. Amen. Everybody's invited to be a part of that. You know, I've heard this rumor about, well, it's targeted. More. No, it's not targeted to anybody. It's available for all people, all ages. Amen. Come. I think it's going to be a pastor's dunking booth. 
If you thought I could I could dance, wait till you see me swim. Yeah. And scream. Amen. I'm going to ask Moses if he would close us in a word of prayer. Thank you for joining with us today. We hope this broadcast was a blessing and encouragement to you. We invite you to join each Sunday morning at 11 a.m. for worship service and each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. for Bible study. You can join us in person, listen on 100.5 FM, or watch our live streams on Facebook, YouTube, or our church website. Please be sure to like, follow, share, subscribe on Facebook and YouTube so you'll be notified in the future. Also, if you have Roku, Fire, or Apple TV, you can load the BoxCast app, search for New Hope Baptist Church, and look for our Hope is an Anchor logo, and watch our service as well. We also have QR codes, which can be scanned to quickly access some of our sites.